So it's when folks have trouble um, internalizing their own successes and feeling like they deserve their achievements and uh, it makes them feel like frauds and like they're going to be somehow exposed. And it's generally talked about in a context of, uh, in a professional context, so something that you experience at work. But uh, I'd like to talk about it in the context of identity, how it's possible to feel like you don't deserve your identity and you're going to be exposed as a fraud. And I'm going to mostly focus on my uh, own experiences. There are definitely parallels. Um, I'm sure a lot of folks in here have experienced similar things, but I'm gonna focus on some examples from my own life. So first up, I'm trans. This isn't something I'm super comfortable talking about, but I'm pretty public about it. Um, and this is something that I've had a lot of trouble uh, coming to terms with, and I still do. And it's, it's something where I, I question whether I'm valid, and I question both whether I'm valid as a trans person and whether I'm valid as a woman, and that's very difficult to deal with. And situations that trigger that are very uncomfortable, and I often just uh, avoid them or go and hide out in my hotel room at a conference because I'm not comfortable at an event and have a minor anxiety attack and end up chatting to friends online and it's not, it's not comfortable. Um, and some of this, some of this is exacerbated I think because I, I pass pretty well so I have, I, I meet people at conferences, I talk to people, I think they accept me, and then I find out that they didn't realize I was trans, and I see their reaction just change a little bit, and I always wonder what's going through their minds. Like, what do they now think? What, what about the people who never know? Do th they aren't seeing the real me? They're seeing, they're seeing what, they, what they expect to see. I also get feelings like this in events for women because as I as I said I'm not I have like I am a woman trans women are women but I have a lot of internalized transphobia because society does that to all of us and even when you actually understand it and come to terms with it getting rid of it is really difficult and I I'm not sure whether it's even possible, but I go to these events and I, actually I don't go to a lot of events for women because I find it very difficult to actually get up the courage to go because when I go there I feel out of place, even no matter how welcome everyone is, it's this internalization that is the real source of the problems. And I also feel the same way in male-dominated events, which, and male-dominated spaces, meetings, meetups, conferences, and in our industry, these are, these are very common. Um, I was at a dinner just the other week, there were 20 guys and I was the only woman, and most of the time I tried not to pay attention to it, but occasionally I would just like look around and think, you know, do I really belong here? Like no matter, um, and yes, I do, but overcoming that is pretty difficult. And really, the only way to overcome it is experience and pushing boundaries. And part of this, I think, is that like our identities are kind of constructed from the things that we believe and our skills and our passions and our likes and our background, and when we describe who we are, we frame it in terms of these things. And if you don't, if you are uncomfortable, if you don't have confidence in some of those things, it kind of undermines your whole identity. Um, and so th this causes some pretty big consequences, like, this is just a few examples of some of the thoughts that run through my head and 
sometimes I get into a sort of negative spiral and it's kind of self, it feeds on myself, it feeds on itself. There's this little voice in the back of my head that kind of points out the bad things and it's, it's not fun. <laughs> And it also causes me to not express myself because I don't have that confidence. I don't know whether my opinions are valid, whether my feelings are valid, whether I'm valid. And so I don't tend to talk about the things that I feel, the things that I believe, unless I feel like, I, unless I feel like I'm in an environment where that's already um, well established. So uh, what can I do about that? And one thing I find helps really a lot is reflecting on the positives. Like when I start thinking like that, I just have to take a moment and think, what are the good experiences I've had? What are the, some of the times that I felt welcome, accepted? I felt like I was able to express myself um, and just taking a moment to think about those helps to reframe into a more positive mindset. Also, there are things that make me happy. These are my pet rats. I just have to see a picture of them and I instantly feel happy. Um, and I wish I could take them to conferences so I could just like go back to my hotel room and play with them. Um, but yeah, it's if I am feeling miserable, like there are some things that make us happy and just knowing what those are and when you can just turn to them and just give you that little boost of positivity is, is good to have. And there are also, of course, hazards. There are situations, there are environments that exacerbate these things. There are people who are toxic, there are people who are well-meaning but just say the wrong things or don't quite get it. <coughs> and it's good to push boundaries and putting yourself in situations where you're uncomfortable with it is, is, a pretty, is the way to overcome this, but, but it's important not to do too much at once and make sure that when you go into these situations, you're actually you're actually in a frame of mind where you can deal with it and it, that it's not going to be too much at once. So, so yeah, be aware of what causes, what, what triggers these issues, what makes them worse, and just be careful of those. And most importantly, support from friends, like having friends who you can talk to, friends who you can reach out to, friends who when you post a Facebook message at two in the morning will message you and say, hey, do you need someone to talk to? And being like having, a, having relationships with those friends so you support them too and you can really share things, friends with common experiences, friends with common backgrounds, that's really important. So, yeah, I would just like to finish off by saying you are valid no matter who you are, and never forget that. And if anyone wants to ask me questions, I will take questions now, but you can also tweet at me. That's my email handle down there. Ah, my Twitter handle, my direct messages are open or you can come find me afterwards if it's not something you wanna like talk to around uh, other people. Thank you. Uh, so uh, when it, uh, this talk, as soon as I, when I first heard imposter syndrome, I'm also trans um, and I was like, immediately I was like, oh, you mean that thing I've been feeling about gender my whole life. <laughs> um, and it, what you're talking about so completely resonates with me. You had that slide up with the thoughts, and I was like, oh, oh, it's my internal monologue. Um, uh, do you, how do you think this applies or does it apply to cis folks in, and in what ways? Or, or if you can answer that question, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I feel like the example I gave of being the only woman in male-dominated spaces, for example, um, is, is definitely something that, that can apply to cis women, does apply to cis women. Um, I have seen lots of other kinds. I've seen people describing places where they feel like they don't fit in. I, I kind of, I spoke to the things that I personally have experienced with and had issues with, of course, because like we feel this in much smaller ways every day as well. And I was kind of more talking about the big ones that cause me to actually like, that cause real problems. That co well, let's not say smaller problems aren't real, that cause bigger problems. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, I feel like identity is complicated. We all have self-doubts about various aspects of identity. And it's definitely something we should be thinking about and talking about. Um, I was wondering if there are things that people do that are helpful in the situations where you do feel a bit of imposter syndrome and if there's more things that the rest of us can do to make sure that you, not to try and make you feel more comfortable. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough one, actually. Um, most of these situations I've described, everyone is being very welcoming and accommodating. The, and there isn't anything obvious that they could do in that situation um, other than, I guess, making it more diverse so there are more people like me. Um, but the most important thing is actually if you have friends who have these issues, be there, be someone who they can talk to, who they can reach out to when they need someone to talk to. Is there anything that you think that uh, events that are organized, uh, especially, especially for uh, uh, women-only events, that they can do to, say, uh, address or improve upon this particular uh, form of imposter syndrome regarding gender identity? Mm -hmm. That is, that's a good question. Um, I am honestly not sure. Like a lot of it is like internalized feelings and uh, like it's difficult to, it's, it's difficult to just overcome those from external, external factors. Um, definitely having, um, definitely like being more uh, like, I guess being more active about reaching out and not just assuming that people are who you think they are, but just like saying, you know, do you want someone? Uh, like, do you f like do you feel welcome here? Is do you need someone to talk to? Are we actually are we actually taking your feelings about this into account? I'm not sure of a good way to actually say that in a conference context, though. Um, yeah, I think talking talking to folks, obviously, my experiences are only are my experiences, even though I've seen some parallels there. And I think talking to more folks and finding out um, what their experiences are and what kinds of things would make them feel welcome to. I would say I, my experience is that in more inclusive spaces, sometimes I feel even more of this internalized feel mm -hmm. that I'm, am I trans enough, am I femme enough, you know, this is called the women in, and I'm non-binary. Am I even well? You know, is this really my space? And am I non-binary enough you know, to to be in this space? Do you have that uh, feeling as well? That sometimes even the more inclusive spaces tend to be the one that trigger these uh, negative reactions more the most. Yeah, I've I have found that. Um, I think the reason for that tends to be that it's often kind of social, like a lot of those people know each other already and they just kind of talk to each other and don't necessarily make an effort to reach out to people. So it's not like they are often like me, we have things in common, but they're, uh, they're so busy talking to people that, they, that, that I feel excluded simply because everyone's too busy to talk to me. And, and, and that, that causes a that, that definitely causes a feeling of exclusion and it kind of triggers the other things I was talking about. That's time. Thank you so much, everyone.